on. Hi everyone, this is Tanner here, and today I'm joined with my good friend Joe. Hello. And welcome to the start of a new series that I want to call Comics to Cinema Conversations, where we talk about comic book films and our thoughts on them. Today, in episode one, we'll be covering the DC EU or the DC Extended Universe and going through all the films from Man of Steel all the way to the most current film, which is Zack Snyder's Justice League. Um, definitely between Marvel and DC, DC's had the most difficult time, I feel like, with the movie transition, which is unfortunate because we both love DC. But we're going to talk about all these films and kind of where they went wrong, where they went right. Starting with Man of Steel in 2013 being the first film released. Now, we have different opinions on this film. Uh, Joe really loves it. And I think it's fine. Um, I feel like that it's a good entry point to the DC Extended Universe. Um, and I think in terms of production, it's well made. The score is fantastic. Um, I think the way it looks is nice. I like how it has a darker color palette because it kind of establishes this epic tone that is kept throughout a lot of the films. And I think overall that the film is well made. And even though I have storytelling issues with it, I think for a jumping off point for the DCEU is a pretty good start. And you know, it has controversy nowadays, but when it came out, people enjoyed it. And I think that this is overall a good jumping off point for the DC Cinematic Universe. There's some, uh, like a Bruce Wayne Easter egg and elements like that to kind of get you intrigued. There's a good standalone story um, for the most part, even though I think that sometimes the flashbacks get a little bit iffy, but um, it's a good jumping off point. I'll, I kind of view this film like Iron Man 1. I'm not the biggest fan of Iron Man 1. Both Iron Man 1 and Man of Steel are good jumping out points for the universe. And I think both films do a good job establishing the tone. So that's kind of my brief take on Man of Steel. Joe, I know you really like this movie. So if you want to talk about it uh, a bit more in depth and what you really like about it. Sure. So yeah, like Tanner said, I'm a pretty big fan of this movie. I agree that I think it's overall a very good starting point for the DCEU and the cinematic universe in general. I think it's interesting that it's also the only time in the DCEU that Christopher Nolan was heavily involved and that he helped uh, write the story for it with David S. Goyer, though Goyer wrote the screenplay. And it's uh, important to note that Goyer and Nolan were obviously behind the highly influential uh, Dark Knight trilogy, which I feel you can very much feel the influence of that trilogy in this movie. I don't know if some people might say that that's a bad thing. Some people would say it's a good thing, but I I'd say regardless, you can definitely tell that this movie was influenced, especially by, I'd say, Batman Begins in terms of the, the flashback structure, how you flashback to different points in Clark's life, like how you flashback to different points in Bruce Wayne's life in Batman Begins. Overall, I'd say, um, like I said, I quite enjoyed this movie. Casting wise, I, th I think casting wise, it's very well casted. Henry, Henry Cavill, Amy Adams, Michael Shannon, Kevin Costner, Diane Lane, a whole bunch of other people, Russell Crowe. I think that it's a very strong cast and they all play off each other well. My personal favorite is probably Michael Shannon. And I'd say it's just kind of a shame that they ended up killing him off because not that it was, we'll talk about that later, but not that it was bad for the story, in my opinion, just that we don't get to see any more of probably the best actor in this film after this movie. Like Tanner said, uh, the soundtrack is very well done. That's all I got to say for now. What were you going to say, Tanner? One thing I want to touch on the acting. Um, 
I like the acting in this movie because it seems very kind of theatrical. You have, like you said, Russell Crowe, who I think is really good in this movie. Diane Lane, Kevin Costner. I feel like a lot of the acting is very kind of almost theater acting. There's a lot of emotion in it. And I almost like how the acting is kind of a lot more serious in this movie. You know, we'll talk about the Marvel movies, you know, in the next episode. But I feel like a lot of the Marvel, you know, dialogue and interactions are very chemistry based. And I feel like the, at least for Man of Steel and some of the other DC movies, I feel like the acting is a bit more serious and it almost kind of feels Shakespearean. I think helps that epic take on the movie. Um, I really like Michael Shannon as Zod. He's a very high point of the film. I think that um, he definitely boosts this movie for me in terms of kind of the overall grade. Um, I'm interested to see what you think of Henry Cavill because people are mixed on him. For me, he's good. There could, I think, be a better actor, but he's not terrible. He's just kind of good. I don't have that much of a hot take on him. I think he does the, I actually really like his Clark Kent kind of being this calm person. And I think he's a good Superman. So I'm just interested to see what you think of Cavill as the character. Um, for Cavill, I'd say to start with, in terms of like looking like the character and looking like Superman and Clark Kent, he was like the perfect choice. He very much like kind of embodies how I would expect the character to look and act. Um, I would agree with you that I think he does a very good job playing Clark Kent. And it's kind of unfortunate that as the movies have gone on, they kind of used Clark less and less and focused more on the Superman aspect of Clark, which I'd say that's kind of why I like this movie is because it focuses quite a bit on Clark Kent and who he is and the, the emotional struggles and turmoil he goes through as a character uh overall i think cavill does a very good job as this version of superman as it's important to note that snyder's version of superman feels very different from the usual uh comics version of superman i know some people have said that the snyder superman is closer to like a dr manhattan or a uh uh, Supergirl almost in terms of being more of like a, a cold character that kind of has to try his best to act human in terms of like struggling with his humanity whereas comic Superman is very much um, like he was raised in Kansas and just feels like feels very much human as opposed to this version of Superman, which very much struggles with his humanity. So I think Cavill does a very good job uh, as this specific version of Superman. And I'd be very interested to see him try and act as like a more comic accurate Superman sometime in the future. Yeah, well, one thing about this Man of Steel movie is that's a very different take from Superman. You know, you have the Christopher Reeves version which is very much oh this superman who helps people and is very bright and colorful and is kind of this symbol of hope in that way while this is almost more like here's an alien from another planet and kind of sets up the epic tones for the dc extended universe and i do think that this film overall goes for that with the color scheme there's a lot of grays and kind of darker colors which i think lead to that tone and i do think Cavill could pull off kind of more fun Superman because there's a lot of interview clips you know where he's seems like a nice guy and I think overall Man of Steel the the flashbacks kind of get to me I think that we don't see enough of them it's like oh well okay here's a small scene of him as a kid and I just feel like they really don't build off each other and I think sometimes that structure is kind of a bit messy um also, I'm not a big fan of Amy Adams as Lois Lane. I like Amy Adams as an actress, but I feel like her Lois Lane is just not that good. She's kind of missing that spunk that Lois Lane has. And I just didn't feel like with the line delivery, she did the best. Um, so overall, I'm going to give my grade. I'll probably give Man of Steel about a 7.5, maybe an 8. Um, it's a good jumping off point. So Joe, if you want to 
give your grade on this film and then we can move on to the next installment? I'd say probably an eight for me. Okay, so moving on to Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, three year gap between Man of Steel and BVS which is just kind of ridiculous. And I think this is kind of when the issues of the DCEU started is this time gap. But Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, in my opinion, is a really bad movie. Uh, There's just so many things going on with it. And the main issue I have is that I don't think the conflict between Batman versus Superman is handled that well. One of the reasons it's so popular in the comics is because the characters are poor opposites. You know, Superman is saving the day. He's very heroic, doing a lot of the right things, while Batman is kind of in the shadows and uses some interesting methods. And I think going into this movie, it was set up well because Man of Steel, you know, Superman saves people. And I thought overall it was going in the right tone and direction. But I feel like in this film, you know, the Batman Superman seems almost too similar. You know, whenever Superman saves people in that montage, it's a very drab and sad feeling, which I don't really like. I think it could have been portrayed in a, you know, bigger sense. And I do like Ben Affleck's Batman. um, And I do think some of the stuff is done well. I just think we should have gotten a flashback and a bit more story on Batman. So I think that overall the conflict is not set up well. I just feel like this movie has so many things. Lex Luthor, I don't think is written well. I, I, I think Jesse Eisenberg it was a terrible choice for the role. But even if you got like a Tom Hanks or a Brian Cranston or a Joaquin Phoenix, I don't think Rex Luthor would have been that great. I just think the way he's written into this movie is forced. You have Doomsday. There's just so much going on with this film that it becomes really cluttered. I feel like that we honestly should have gotten a Man of Steel sequel then had this movie and then a Batman solo movie within that three-year gap because um, I think that this film is just has so much going on and it's just not really fun to watch at all, in my opinion. For me personally, I think it's important to make a distinction between the two different versions of this movie. Because there's the theatrical version that everyone saw in theaters, obviously. And then there's also the ultimate edition, which adds in an extra half hour of different scenes, which especially see these extra scenes, especially focus on Clark Kent and Superman and give him a lot more to do. Because in my opinion, the theatrical version of the movie, Superman felt like a side character in his own Mm -hmm. movie. Yeah. Whereas uh, I'd say the ultimate edition does a pretty good job of balancing the the lead role between Clark Kent and Bruce Wayne. Um, I think this movie ultimately proves that as much as I like Snyder's work and the rest of his trilogy, that he probably wasn't the best choice to kind of lead the universe. Because he's basically, I mean, this movie should easily have made a billion dollars at the box office, but it had horrendous word of mouth that caused it to lose a lot of money that it could have possibly made and kind of it caused issues with the production of justice league in that they wanted to make it uh, change the tone but we'll get to that when we talk about justice league but even considering all of that i don't think the ultimate edition of this movie is a bad movie it definitely has some issues like I'd say the Martha scene that everyone talks about is still in the ultimate edition, still just as bad. Um, Lex's plan is very overly convoluted. Mm-hmm. Um, my biggest problem with this movie is it's trying to be way too many things because it's trying to be a sequel to Man of Steel. It's trying to introduce Batman while also uh, taking inspiration from the comic The Dark Knight Returns. It's trying to introduce Wonder Woman and the rest of the Justice League. And it's trying to do the death of Superman storyline. It's trying to mix all of those different storylines that could all make really interesting and really good movies on their own. And trying to do that all in one two and a half hour or three hour movie, depending on the version you watch. 
And ultimately, I think that's where it kind of fails for me. Because it just, it feels, it feels like too much. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. There are a lot of parts of this movie that I enjoy. It's like I said, I really like Henry Cavill as Superman. I think Ben Affleck, while well, he's not my favorite Batman, he does a very good job in the role, especially considering some of the issues that people have with how he was written as a character. Um, I think once again, the, the music score by Hans Zimmer and uh, Tom Hulkenberg is very well done and kind of lifts up certain parts of the movie. I really want to talk about the opening scene because I think the opening scene of this movie is phenomenal in that it shows, uh, it basically shows Man of Steel from Bruce Wayne's position or perspective. And I think that was a really cool way to introduce their conflict, even if the conflict itself ends up kind of faltering and not being the best part of the movie. Uh, the warehouse scene is really well done. The warehouse fight with uh, Batman and the thugs. I really like one scene that really annoyed me that they cut out of the theatrical version is after the Capitol building explodes. There's a whole scene of Superman uh, saving people from the explosion that they cut out of the theatrical version. Because in the theatrical version, it looks like he just flies away after it. So it's, it's little, little changes like that that aren't in the uh, theatrical version are why I think the theatrical version is a much worse movie than the Ultimate Edition. Yeah, Joe, you brought up a lot of good points. I would call this movie a clip movie where a clip movie is, oh, yeah, that's a cool clip. You know, Bruce Wayne seeing the Man of Steel events or even the Batman versus Superman fight itself or the warehouse scene. There's some cool moments, but I feel like overall the movie just does not gel well together. Um, I, I like the point you brought up about Zack Snyder not being the man to direct these big DC movies because I did overall like Zack Snyder's direction in Man of Steel. But I just think for the big movies like Batman versus Superman is not the right way to go. It was like, it'd be like for Marvel if John Favreau, who did Iron Man 1, also did Civil War. You just, I feel like, could have gotten a different director uh, for the project of this film. Um, I, I, I think that I, I have seen some of the Ultimate Edition clips, and I do think it helps build on to the story, but I think overall this movie kind of fell apart in the storyboarding department. And I agree that I think each of these stories would have worked individually um so we've talked about kind of batman and superman in this film i will add on that i do think ben affleck does have some really great moments in this movie and i like him as the character he's not my favorite batman but i ultimately like him as the character but i'm interested to see what you think of wonder woman appearing in this movie because everyone was happy about that in my opinion it just feels way too forced and it really undermines the whole conflict of this film and i think she sh should have been introduced in her own movie first and maybe you get like a tease in this movie of her but her coming in at the end just didn't really feel earned and it felt kind of sloppy in my opinion it's a tough one um i'd say well i definitely enjoy uh gal in the role as a wonder woman I think she does. Uh, she has a good performance in this movie. I think her and uh, Ben Affleck have good chemistry together. Do I think the character should have been introduced in this movie? I think I'm okay with it, but I'd agree that the actual execution of her being in this in this movie is kind of flawed. Because it definitely, it seemed, it's like, at the, for example, at the end fight, why couldn't she have been the one to kill Doomsday? Because she mm -hmm. definitely wasn't struggling with anything with it. So it just kind of introduces some issues into the movie, whereas if they had left her out, there wouldn't have been some of those issues. Yeah, um, I think there are some things working for this movie to propel the DC EU, like, I think Jeremy Irons really kind of gives an almost theater epic performance I was talking about. So in the Man of Steel, 
actor, so I really love him as Alfred. He's great. Um, I think overall the tone of this movie is in the right direction. I just think there's a lot of plot points. And this is the one movie where I really see DC trying to catch up with Marvel. Um, I just don't get in this three-year gap. I mean, 2014 give us the Batman movie, then 2015 Man of Steel 2, and then lead into this movie. That three-year gap, it's just really confusing for me. Um, ultimately, there's, there's some cool moments in Batman versus Superman, but I just don't think it's flushed out well. I'll probably go 6 out of 10 for this one. Uh, Joe, if you want to give any final thoughts in your grade before we move on to the next film. I'd give the theatrical version a 3 out of 10 and the Ultimate Edition a 7. Okay, I, I do yeah, I do think that Ultimate Edition does have some nice... Uh, moments to it um, so now we go to Suicide Squad now I have not seen this film so Joe I'll let you kind of take the reins on this one um, I ultimately from what I've heard the movie seems really crammed and from what I've kind of seen via videos I feel like that Joker should have been the main villain instead of Enchantress um, I think overall that this film was trying to do something different and give us the villains and these characters are popular, like Will Smith's Deadshot's been very popular, and Harley Quinn as well. So I guess the film did succeed in one way. I just feel like that the ultimate end goal of the film could have been better. But I'm interested to see what you think of uh, this movie. Ultimately, I was kind of disappointed in this movie because I, I very much enjoy some of the other movies that David Ayer has made especially End of Watch. I think that's a, a very good movie and a much better movie than this one. Um, I know that there's been a whole bunch of issues and people talking about how like this movie kind of got screwed over by the reception to Batman v Superman and it caused WB to panic and like try to change the tone in the edit. Because I think I read somewhere, I don't know if it's true, that like a trailer company helped edit parts of this mm -hmm. movie. And if that is true, you can very much feel it with just the large number of pop songs that get repetitively played. And you just come, they come one after another in just throughout this whole movie. And it just feels very, it feels like almost too much like a music video than an actual movie. I think there's some, there's obviously some good casting, like Will Smith, I enjoyed his Deadshot, Margot Robbie, his Harley Quinn. Uh, some of those, a number of those actors have been kept for the new Suicide Squad movie. So clearly casting wasn't the issue with this movie. I do think that they should have gone for a different uh, bad guy than Enchantress. I feel like the actress that played her was kind of miscast. And I also feel like the overall, the character just feels like too big of a threat for some, for these characters that feel kind of like street level, not necessarily street level, but they're not like, these types of characters aren't gonna be fighting Superman or, or Wonder Woman it makes more sense for them to have a more ground level threat to face. So I feel like that's kind of my issue with this movie is that it feels like it's got too much going on for what it wants to accomplish. Um, yeah, I, I would agree from what I've seen and heard. Um, one thing that really kind of bothers me in this film is people like it's the guardians of the galaxy of the DCEU and it's kind of ironic that now James Gunn is directing the Suicide Squad movie who did the Guardians of the Galaxies movies um but like Guardians of the Galaxy like oh people love the soundtrack in that movie because it fits the character I feel like in Suicide Squad they just play these pop culture songs because I don't know it's fun I just feel like the film didn't have this distinct tone and I just don't love how the villain, like you said, is this really big threat. I think Jared Leto, Joker, would have been a good villain because I think ultimately from what I've seen, 
I think the design could have worked, and I think he could have worked as the character. I just think with him being in the movie so little, it just was never fleshed out. And I just feel like this movie was released at a weird time. In my opinion, it should have been like after Justice League or something like that. But ultimately, I'm excited for the new one. I think that, you know, this movie just should have been its own thing and should have kind of been ignored from kind of the critics of Batman versus Superman because as we talked about with that movie the main issue was there's too much going on and it sounds like that's still the main issue in Suicide Squad so I don't think they really fixed it and I would have liked a darker tone movie because I remember seeing the first trailer I'm like oh this is kind of cool because I love the DC villains Kill Croc is in this movie he's really cool Captain Boomerang this could have been a really neat movie and kind of its own niche film, but instead it's this really over-the-top big villain thing. So I'm not going to give a grade because I haven't seen it, but I just think there's a lot of missteps. I'm also interested to hear, Joe, what do you think of the Ayer cut? Because people are like, oh, we're, we're, like we got the Snyder cut. Are we going to get the Ayer cut? Are we going to see his full vision of the movie? I don't think we will, but I just kind of want to hear your take on that. I definitely would be interested in watching the air cut if they decided to release it. But everything I've heard from like news websites and stuff, it sounds like WB doesn't want to release it. But it sounds like it's kind of everything that people would want from this movie, like a darker tone, less crazy pop songs. It just sounded more interesting. So it's kind of a shame that they don't want to release it, especially because I think David Ayer is a much better director than what shows in this movie. Yeah, because he did, he also did Training Day, right? I've heard that movie was really good with a serious Yeah, time. I, th- I think he wrote it. I don't think he directed it. Oh, okay. So what would you give this movie out of 10? Probably a 5. I could maybe be convinced to give a 6. So kind of middle eh, movie. So moving on to Wonder Woman... So this film is really interesting because it came out and everyone's like, this is the best film ever. And I feel like that I loved it when I first saw it. I'm like, this is top tier. After seeing it, I'm kind of, I think it's good. One thing I do like in this movie is Gal Gadot as the character. As I mentioned, I love all like the acting in the DCEU, how all the characters have this theatrical Shakespearean acting to them and I think Gal Gadot carries that over really well in her performance and I like how she makes Wonder Woman her own character because there's a lot of different types of Wonder Woman you know portrayals but I like how she's almost kind of this quiet warrior person with a good heart and I think that fits very well Um, I like the way it's shot it's definitely a movie with some brighter colors but there's still some dark moments in it and I think overall the tone is different from the other DC films, but it fits in really well. Um, I love Chris Pine as Steve Trevor. I think he's a top-tier DCEU character in this film, and I think that the relationship works very well between the two characters. I do have a couple issues. First of all, Ares. Um, I, I just don't like the final look of him, and it feels really forced. I don't really like the ending because what happens is it's, if I remember correctly, they're like, oh, well, you know, Ares was kind of controlling everyone in World War I. So when he dies, like, it's over. And I just feel like that really oversimplifies kind of the whole message of the movie. And I feel like that overall, the ending was kind of a bit eh for me. And the third issue I have are the side characters that helps Wonder Woman and Steve Trevor I feel like that they're not written that well. Um, I think that they could have been fleshed out more. So when I saw this film, I really loved it. Now I think it's pretty good. I think that it overall is a film that I I like, and I'm going to give a good grade to, but it does have some notable issues to it. Personally, I don't have a, a ton to say about this movie that hasn't like already been said. I think it's definitely a good movie. Mm -hmm. I didn't see it when it first came out. I saw it a little while later. I think it's definitely a a little bit overrated because people were acting like it's like the best superhero movie 
but it's it's good it's it's like above average i'd say i think there's a certain point in the movie towards the middle where it gets a little too slow for me um but yeah. overall i overall i think it's a good movie it has cool action sequences mm-hmm. i like the slow mo that they use uh chris pine he's very funny in this movie uh yeah, I enjoy it. I'd give it probably a seven out of ten. Um, what did you th- what do you think of um kind of what I said about Aries? Because that's like a big issue people have with this movie. Um uh, like where 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 do you land on that? Uh I'd agree they probably could have found a better design for him. Um I remember him looking kind of weird. Yeah, I think the it, actual fight itself is pretty good, but it definitely feels it continues the the whole thing where DC movies just end with a whole bunch of destruction happening in the third act. Yeah, I definitely do think that this one was the right step in the DCEU, and we'll talk about future DCEU movies that I like a lot and what those movies do well. Wonder Woman introduces. I'll probably go eight out of 10 for a rating it's a good movie and i think overall it did its job well in uh the dc cinematic universe kind of establishing wonder woman now we have oh boy uh justice league we'll talk about the 2017 version here justice league as it's called um i remember seeing this film and ever since i first saw it i was just underwhelmed the original Justice League is really underwhelming. It's boring. There's not really anything funny. The action is really stale. Steppenwolf sucks, and the character's not not well developed. And I just don't have a ton to say about it. I just think it's a film that is really boring, and the tone is so off. Like, you know, going through kind of these movies, Man of Steel and Batman v Superman, I would say are tonally similar. Suicide Squad is different, but that kind of makes sense. And like I said, Wonder Woman kind of has that same tone. And I feel like this movie just is so weird with the way it has its tone. Um, I just feel like overall that well, there's a lot of stuff that happened behind the scenes. And I feel like that just really shows in this movie. We'll talk about the Snyder Cut at the end of this video. But yeah, the original Justice League it's just boring. There's no energy. There's no passion. And kind of hearing about the behind the scenes stuff and how certain actors and actresses were treated poorly. The mess makes sense. I'm going to give this movie like a five out of 10. I think it's probably my least favorite DC uh, cinematic universe movie. I might have issues with Batman v Superman, but at least that movie has some cool moments. The original Justice League doesn't really have any, uh, in my opinion. I really, really do not like this movie. Um, I think you can just very much feel the the clash between the mm-hmm. Schneider scenes and the Joss Whedon written scenes. And it just, the whole movie totally feels like a mess. Mm-hmm. Uh, Steppenwolf looks terrible. The CGI, just overall in this movie, looks very bad. Uh, the story feels like it's just kind of been chopped up so much because it's been chopped up from a four-hour movie to a less than two-hour movie. So things just kind of happen that don't really make sense. The comedy is very much, I don't even want to say hit or miss because I think the comedy was very bad in this movie. It's all mess. Yeah. Um, it just, it feels so separate from Man of Steel and BVS mm-hmm. in a bad way. Like, it just, it doesn't have, uh, well, obviously, Whedon taking over for Snyder. Uh, Danny Elfman replaced Hans Zimmer and Tom Holkenberg as a composer. It just, it feels so separate. The I know the cinematography was kind of messed with to give it like a brighter look and then it just looks garish and unappealing. Yeah, just I am not a fan of this movie. I would give it like a 2 out of 10. Yeah, um, 
five out of ten when I give it, it's very low for me. This almost seems like this movie was supposed to come out like ten years ago because it has like the Tim Burton Batman score and the Christopher Reeves Batman. Like this was like the eighties and nineties Justice League movie. It's just so out of character. It's just kind of a mad, boring movie for me, and I think that people have said that it's terrible. I agree. There's this really good video on YouTube. It's that Justice League 2017 is the worst superhero movie, and I kind of agree to an extent. It just misses the mark a lot, um, and everything is so rushed, and um, I, I don't think either of us want to spend any more time on this I movie. I still can't. I still can't believe that the Henry Cavill face CGI somehow got past like the CGI people or whatever. Like, I can't believe that somehow was deemed okay for people to see. It just looks so bad, in my opinion. Yeah, at the end, I was going to bring up kind of the big DC cringe moments, for lack of a better word, and the mustache Cavill is one of them. It never really bothered me, to be honest. It doesn't look great, but didn't take away from the movie. It's kind of like Leia in Rogue One, the cameo. She asked people, like, she looks terrible. I'm like, I don't really see it, but I'm not someone who's really into the visual effects of a film. Um, I also think the placement of this movie is terrible. Give us Aquaman. Give us... I, I don't like to compare this to Avengers. You know, Avengers, we got Iron Man, Thor... Captain America and kind of Hulk before if Hawk and Black Widow introduced in Avengers 2012. If we got Aquaman before, that would mean we would have Batman, Superman, Aquaman, Wonder Woman all having kind of these major major parts in the DC extend universe before we get Justice League. And you know, I love the Justice League like animated shorts and cartoons from like the early 2010s and just kind of that chemistry is just not felt in this movie at all. So we then go to Aquaman 2018, which I think is kind of overrated. I am not the biggest fan of Jason Momoa as his character. I've kind of talked about how a lot of these characters have in the DC, a lot of the actors have this Shakespearean former theater presence to them. I just don't think Jason Momoa really does the best job in this film of portraying Aquaman. I, I Yeah, he's fun. He's having a fun time, but his performance almost reminds me with that of like The Rock in his films. I'm just not the biggest fan of it. I do like the direction of Aquaman, how, you know, he's kind of like this Thor-like character who's this, you know, this underwater, you know, kingdom and overall that story. Um, I do think that this film sometimes just has too much going on in terms of visuals, but, you know, like the opening of this movie is really jumbled, but I love the ending you know, when Aquaman goes to, like, that secret dinosaur area, finds his mom, who is still alive. That was a really nice twist. And then the ending where he gets his suit and the final um, battle of Orm was really well done. I like the villains in this movie. The villains up until now, besides Zod, have been bad in the DCEU. So I liked Ocean Master a lot and Black Manta, I thought, were both really cool in this movie so i like those additions it's overall a very fun movie i think the pacing could have been better but i still think it has some of these dceu epic tones and you know i loved the batman the brave and the bold cartoon back in like 2008 whenever that came out and part of that could cartoon was the fun action and aquaman does have that so i do enjoy this movie i just think it's could have been better written and paced at points. Yeah, I think vis- visually Aquaman is a spectacular movie, but script wise, I don't think it's the best. I think story could have been a little better, but it's not. It's not terrible. I think it's it's pretty. It's a well made movie, definitely. Um, I think it has a very good supporting cast. Mm-hmm. Uh, Momoa does a good job in my opinion even though I don't think I appreciate that they gave him more to do in this movie compared to either version of Justice League but I don't think Aquaman at least the DCEU Aquaman is particularly interesting so 
but I, I don't definitely don't hate this movie. I think it's a it's a pretty good movie, and vi- the visuals are very well done. Yeah, I definitely like the bright colors in this movie. I definitely think it brings Atlantis alive, which is really cool. And I really think that there's so many cool words in the DCEU. And I, we also, I didn't mention this, but Themyscira, like in Wonder Woman and Atlantis and all the kingdoms, I think are portrayed very well, especially the one scene where uh, I, Aquaman's on the boat during that like storm and then he has to like dive deep and, and there's like these like monster things that chase him. Like there's just so many cool moments in this film. And James Wan um, was an interesting directing uh, choice. And I think he overall does a fine job with this movie. Um, so I overall like it. Um, I, I, I think that, so I, it's interesting because we have different takes on Aquaman. You think it's kind of more of a script thing. Well, I think it's more of an acting thing. I think overall it's kind of a mix of both at the end of it. Um, I remember when people loved this movie and this movie grossed a lot of money. And I think that's because it was this fun movie. And I do think it does, people say it feels like a Marvel film, but I disagree. I do think this film still has that kind of epic tone from the other DC movies at points. So I overall think it's fun. I'll probably go 7.5 out of 10. Uh, I enjoyed watching it. Would I rewatch it? Maybe. But I think it's fun and definitely uh, a top tier DC movie at the end of the day. I'd personally give it a six out of ten, but I could be convinced to give it a seven. What do you think of um James Wan directing the movie? Um, because that was definitely kind of out of left field choice for this film. I think he's another good example of how horror movie directors often make very good superhero movie directors what's he what's another like sam raimi doing spider-man like Is that what... sam raimi uh david f sandberg who we're about to talk about he was also known for horror um scott derrickson who did doctor strange oh, a couple yeah. others yeah it's definitely an interesting choice i think works out well now we go to Shazam, which is my second favorite DCEU film. I love this movie. Um, There's a lot to talk about, but I'll try to keep it brief. I love the feeling of this film. It definitely, in my opinion, has kind of that DC epic tone of these mighty people out there, like when Billy gets his powers and he sees the wizard and how, sees the wizard and how all of his family gets the powers like that feels like the dce but there's so much uniqueness to this film i love the overall feel of it It feels kind of like an 80s 90s movie it's very colorful uh it's a movie that pops Uh, i just love the feeling and tone of it and knows what wants to be and achieves it um i love zachary levi he's he's a really great actor and he really brings that fun light hardness to this role um the villain is fine you know he he's okay he's not great but he doesn't bring the movie down i think the supporting cast is top tier jack Doan grazer um as billy's friend is great uh just kind of the foster family that billy has i think is good i think there's a lot of good messages about family this is one of my favorite dc movies and i think as someone who's been a big dc fan it kind of achieves that DC mix of fun with the epic with just overall great action and a great kind of family message uh, to it. So I love this film and I, I think very highly of it. I'd agree with you that this is definitely one of my favorite uh, DCEU movies. I was very surprised with how much I enjoyed it when I first saw it. Because I, I knew it was coming out, and I th- find the character of Captain Marvel or Shazam to be kind of an interesting character, so I decided to go see it. But I was overall very surprised at how much, very surprised at how much I enjoyed it personally. Um, I think directing, writing, acting, soundtrack, overall, all of it is very well done. Mm-hmm. Um, trying to think of anything to add that you didn't already cover 
it's just a really fun movie. Like, there's nothing. It reminds me a lot, and people have said this. It reminds me a lot of the Raimi Spider Man films. It's just really well made and has kind of that good heart. And you can tell that everyone in the movie is at least kind of enjoying it, you know? Yeah, I'd agree. It's probably the best DC EU movie in terms of capturing the like fun nature of the comics. Mm hmm. That's a good way to put it. Um, I, I, this movie just kind of has a lot of character detail. Like, I love that final action scene where that the fair, so fun. I um, also love the foster parents, especially Cooper Andrews. I forget the dad's name, but he just has like a heart of gold and he's a great guy. I just, I don't know, this, this movie is just a really enjoyable film. And I think sometimes superhero movies sometimes don't appeal to families and it's just, oh, save the day, but I like how Shazam really kind of has that nice message, and it's not forced in them. I, I, I like it um, a, a lot, so I'll probably give this film an 8.5. I don't know about a 9. I think the villain kind of bogs that down, but I would go 8.5 uh, out of 10, and I'm interested to see how the sequel goes. Yeah, my, my one issue with this movie is that they couldn't get Henry Cavill to come back for Superman as a cameo. Oh, that, yeah. That's such, a, that's, that's such a minor issue, and I think they did a, a good enough job by showing him with, like, the, the head cut off. I don't hate that fix, but overall, it's just something that kind of bugs me about the movie. But I'd give it, I'd give it an 8 out of 10. Yeah, it's a really great movie. And I love the, the we haven't talked about the post- the credit scenes, but you have Mr. Mind introduced, which is neat. So the next two films are interesting because Joe has seen Birds of Prey. I haven't, and I have seen Wonder Woman 1984. Joe has not. So we'll go through these very quick. Joe, if you want to just kind of say your quick thoughts on Birds of Prey. Um, for me, seems like a fun movie. Don't have a lot else to say. Seems very similar to kind of Shazam, Tony. And I feel like what Birds of Prey it kind of seems like what Suicide Squad was supposed to be, but uh, you can say your thoughts on uh, that one. Yeah, I wasn't a big fan of this movie. Like, I don't think it's a bad movie. It just wasn't really for me personally. It's not the biggest issue, but I feel like they kind of changed a lot of the characters from how they are in the comics, like to the point where they almost feel unrecognizable. Which it is that isn't an issue if you aren't familiar with the comics, but it's something that, that bugged me watching this movie. Uh, Margot Robbie does a really good job playing Harley Quinn. Um, yeah, I just think they could have done more with this movie to connect it to the the rest of the DCEU. Like I know they reference Suicide Squad, but you could have had like. I don't know, Ben Affleck do a voice line for this movie or have J.K. Simmons cameo as Commissioner mm -hmm. Gordon because there's a scene that takes place in the GCPD. Um, or even had Jared Leto come back, though I know they didn't, they didn't really want to bring him back for different reasons. Um, I think it's overall it's a, a fine movie, but not really one for me personally. Just something about it felt like it was trying to be like the Deadpool movies, but I don't think the script was as strong as those movies. So it kind of didn't it didn't all click for me. I think it's an okay movie, but not one I'd rewatch. Re the main issue, I, I, you brought this up, and from what I've heard, this movie doesn't seem like it's in the DCEU. And if it wants to be like Deadpool, Deadpool 1 and 2 both take place outside the MCU. And I think that if this film wanted to, it should not have been a part of it. If it was supposed to, then like you said, bring in J.K. Simmons and Ben Affleck. There's a rumor going around that we're going to see like Green Arrow in a post credit scene, which would have been neat, but we didn't get that. Um, and that's something I do kind of have an issue with a lot of the DC movies. They don't connect that well. Shazam, I do love the Superman uh, scene at the end, but a lot of the films I just don't feel like connect the best. Um, I do like Harley Quinn as a character, and I think overall it seems like she's portrayed well in this movie. So, yeah, I think overall it seems kind of like a movie that came and went 
Uh, what would you give this movie out of 10? Probably a six. So oh. kind of a little better than Suicide Squad, but kind of on a similar level. Okay, that's kind of what I've heard. So now Wonder Woman 1984 is one of the most disappointing films I've ever seen. This film ugh, just has so much going on with it. Um, now I do, we have a lot to say about the Snyder Cut, so I do want to make this short, but there's so much going on. Um, Wonder Woman herself doesn't really do a whole ton in this movie. And I think overall the setting, it, it's just very... I don't think it's warranted. It's in the 80s because people love the 80s. But there's nothing in this plot that makes sense that takes place in 1984. The villains, I do like Pedro Pascal as Maxwell Lord. I think overall there was a good story there about greed and kind of addiction. I just wish he wasn't this like big villain. Um, addiction is an issue in society. And I think if this character of Maxwell Lord was taken a bit more grounded, I think they've had a more humane story, but they just kind of go out on top. Cheetah's the first major issue. She was not developed well. There's some good stuff, but it's done bad. I really dislike how Chris Pine comes back as Steve Trevor. I love the character, but I mean, he is just, no, it just does not work in this movie. The Cold War setting is forced in. The action is really lame. It's not exciting. And I think overall, they try to reference the old Wonder Woman stuff like the invisible jet, but it's just done to a really poor degree. Uh, this is like a five or four out of 10. I really disliked it. Usually with movies uh, with negative reception, I like, but this one, uh, I agree with the credit critics. And I think if you haven't seen it, because this movie, I don't think many people saw it. You're not really missing that much. I hope Wonder Woman 3 gets back to a more serious kind of tone, but yeah, I just did not like this film at all. And then going to Zack Snyder's Justice League, this is my favorite DCEU movie. This is a 9 out of 10. Um, what I love about this movie is the epic tone I've been alluding to a lot. You know, you get that a lot with the Doom, with the Dark Side flashback, and the overall feel of this movie. And I love how we see more of the characters. I feel like Batman is portrayed in a really good way. Uh, we get a lot more of the Flash. The scene he has at the end is fantastic. I love Cyborg in this movie. I love Ray Fisher as the character, and I he has so many cool moments. Aquaman, I like in this movie. Um, Stephen Wolf is a more menacing villain. And I feel like that this movie just really hits that DC tone. Um, you know, it has that epic feel. You have the camaraderie of the characters. As a DC fan, this movie really kind of hits the nail on the head with the tone. And I love all the other cameos with um, Martian Manhunter. I feel like since this movie, a lot of people love it. It's hard to talk about because... I can only say this is great so many times, but yeah, this is fantastic film. Nine out of 10 for me. The characters are really fleshed out well, plus some great action and the tone. I love this movie. And I know, Joe, you really like it. So if you want to say your, your thoughts on it. Yeah, overall, this movie is just great. I really enjoy it. Um, I think I really appreciate how they uh, give a lot more screen time to the Flash and Cyborg. Mm -hmm. I think it overall made me appreciate Ezra Miller and Ray Fisher a lot more as those two characters. Um, I appreciate actually seeing Darkseid instead of him getting one little mention like in the theatrical cut. Mm -hmm. I think Ben Affleck really gets to shine as uh, Batman in this movie compared to BVS where he was like clearly going through a lot as a character whereas here he gets to kind of be the hero and the man assembling the team he gets a lot more to do and gets to play off more actors um all the supporting cast is is very well done like you get to see Willem Dafoe uh Jared Leto, other people from other movies show up again and give good performances. 
yeah, just overall, it's a very, very good movie. I One of my favorite scenes is when Superman comes back and he puts on the black suit and then you get the narration from both of his his uh, Kryptonian oh, father yeah. and his uh, Earth father. That's one of my favorite scenes, and I love how it ties back to Man of Steel. I just wish it could have been a little a little longer of a scene, but overall, it is it is a four hour long movie. There's only so much they could do. But yeah, overall, I just really enjoy this movie. I do think they probably could have cut it down a little more. I do think it's a it's a tad bit overly long, and some of the stuff at the end feels kind of tacked on. So I would have been fine with it ending with the Superman shirt rip. Everything after that is kind of unnecessary in my opinion. And there's little uh, bits and pieces throughout the movie that I think they could have cut out. But overall, I'd give it a 9 out of 10 just because I love this movie. Yeah, I do too. It's it's fantastic. Um, I don't have a ton of issues with it that are worth mentioning. Um, so yeah, um, before we end this video... I do want to discuss some of the upcoming um, future films. So Suicide Squad, we've kind of mentioned. I'm excited for. I hope it's fun. Black Adam, I do want to talk about a good amount because I'm kind of concerned about this movie because I like The Rock a lot. He's a good actor, really fun. But Black Adam, what I really liked about him in the comics was he's kind of this menacing villain. And I just hope they don't do this thing where they turn him good. Um and isn't like Doctor Strange supposed to appear in this film who I do like and like Hawkman and all these other people. I just feel like that this movie could just be way too much going on, which has been an issue in the DCEU. Um, so uh, that movie, I'm kind of hesitant. The Flash, um, I'm excited about. Andy Muschietti directed the It films, which is an interesting choice, but those films have good visuals and kind of have some time jumps in there. So I feel like it is a good choice. I'm excited about Michael Keaton coming back because I feel like Keaton's Batman and the original one was always okay. But I feel like bringing him back, he can flesh out that character. Aquaman 2, I'm excited to see. And then Shazam 2, I think could be really fun. But I think overall, the upcoming of the DC is kind of going for this more fun vibe. Um, I'm interested to see, Joe, what you think of the upcoming films and kind of your your thoughts on them yeah uh suicide squad i think looks cool it'll probably be i'm just hoping it's a little closer to guardians one than guardians two because i enjoyed guardians one a lot more than the sequel but i'm sure it'll be good and well received either way black adam i'm kind of agree with you that i'm a little worried about just because i'm not sure how It'll work with The Rock playing a very different character from his usual roles, but maybe he'll surprise us. The Flash is probably the DCEU movie I'm most excited for, mm -hmm. just to see the return of uh, Ben Affleck and Michael Keaton and Ezra Miller, who I'm actually, I like him as The Flash after the Snyder Cut. So I'm hoping they take more inspiration from Snyder Cut Flash than Justice League Flash, personally. Aquaman 2, I'm sure, will be fine. And I am very excited for Shazam 2. Yeah, I think that's kind of a good um, take on the films. Um, it's definitely an interesting lineup. I feel like that the one thing, like, I love the DC epic tone. And I feel like that Suicide Squad is going to be a fun movie. That's fine. Give us these villains who I love. Black Adam could have that. I just hope that they don't twist the story too much the flash i think could really be that surprise movie and i feel like it could be the movie that's like wow really kind of big movie that kind of blows people away um and it's it's definitely an interesting lineup i do like how it seems like dc's kind of going with this kind of different tone in terms of okay we're kind of doing individual stories with some sequels i think that overall the structure of the DCEU has been an issue for me, but it seems like they're trying to correct it. Um, I do hope we get Green Lantern sometime soon because I like him. I know that he's supposed to have his own show, but I'm like, I don't know. Um, the one thing that I I do hope, I do like the standalone movies, but I feel like with 
the Batman movie coming off Robert Pattinson, and if we get a Superman reboot, I just hope they find a way to connect the DCEU movies because it could get confusing. Overall, the DCEU has had some good movies. I just don't think the films connect that well, but there's some good standalone films, and I'm excited for the future. Uh, that's kind of my thoughts wrapped up. Joe, if you want to give uh, yours um, on the DCEU as we wrap up here. Yeah, I feel like the DCEU overall just kind of failed after the mm. reception to BVS. It's just been WB kind of trying their best to throw things at the wall and see what sticks. It just it feels like they're just kind of course correcting over and over and over again, and it never nothing ever really feels cohesive. And like you, as you can see, you have this whole list of uh, projects that'll probably never get made that are somehow supposedly in development. So I I just don't know. It just feels very uh, separate and non cohesive. I feel like it's kind of a shame because they they have definitely had some very good movies in the DCEU. It's just a shame that they can't be a little more consistent. Yeah, I think that's a good way to put it. And then uh, did you have anything to say about the the some of the upcoming DCEU TV shows like Peacemaker? So this is something I don't want to mention a bit. I, I feel like that, because talking about the CW, that is a big thing, the Arrowverse. I feel like definitely the Arrowverse kind of is the equivalent of DC to the Marvel Cinematic Universe because Arrowverse established those characters. It has some of a consistent tone, even though I do have an issues with a lot of the shows. So um, I feel like that the Arrowverse is kind of the TV domain. Stuff like Peacemaker, yeah, it'll be fun, but I don't think it really will push the um, DCEU that much. And I kind of wish, because like Marvel, we have the MCU, and now we're getting the Marvel TV shows. I wish that the Arrowverse, we maybe got like Arrowverse movies, like a Flash movie with Grant Gustin and Arrow movie Stephen Amell. And I think that could have helped kind of the direction. I know Ezra Miller does cameo in the Flash, which is cool, but I feel like overall that the TV with DC, I think that they had something going. I just don't think they really landed the mark that well. So that's kind of my response to that question. All right, cool. Yeah, I think I'd agree with you that I'm, I'll am i probably watch these shows, but I'm not super excited for them. Yeah, I do have one more question. Do you think that the Dark Knight trilogy should have been part of the DCEU, as in those are the first three films, and like we get Christian Bale as Batman in the movies? Because that is something people have mentioned a lot, and I'm interested to see what you think. That would have been cool, but at the same time, I feel like the Dark Knight trilogy had a good enough ending, personally. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think that does it for this episode. Joe, thanks for joining me on Comic to Cinema Conversations. We'll be back next time where we discuss Marvel Phase 1. I know this video was long, about an hour, but I feel like doing it in one video was definitely easier, but upcoming we'll be doing a phase per video for Marvel. And until then, uh, we'll catch you guys later. Take care.